All right, good evening, guys. Uh, Ken of Tortoise Capital, nightly strategy podcast for um, March 10th, 2023. So we'll start with the swing trade portfolio. So today was the second day of strong selling. That uh, symbol we looked at yesterday, SVIB, that was that Silicon Valley bank that collapsed, causing runs on some of the financial institutions and generally led to large meltdowns across finance. Um, And so uh, you're gonna see me make decisions to uh, exit the swing trades near the end of the day because it's kind of like the perfect storm and it's everything that and more than I hoped I could get on the short side. And so I don't wanna carry a lot of risk over the weekend, in this case, the risk being some kind of intervention and buying pressure that starts Monday with a big gap up and, and puts me at risk with a lot of shorts that have multiple positions. So this was definitely a case of uh, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, especially in a sideways market um, that's very vulnerable to volatility. So I was uh, uh, I counted my chickens today, if I can say it that way. So we'll start with... Uh, um, Alcoa, you know, it's down, it was down 6% for the day. And you'll recall that yesterday we initiated the collapsing dragon and it closed poorly. So we held that position today on the next collapsing dragon. I put the second position on, it drops like a stone and I elect to get out here. And so that gives us about one, two, three, four, five, 6R on the first one and 3R on the second one. So that's a 9R two-day trade. And um, when my basket is full, I take it home to put in the warehouse. And I just worry about Monday on Monday. Uh, Caterpillar, uh, just wow. It was down uh, 5.6% today. So earlier in the week, we had that about a four R yesterday on the collapsing dragon. We initiated, it was uh, closing poorly. So we added a second position. Uh, Today it gapped down, sold off, added a third position on the break of that support level and cashed it in the peak of misery. And that's about a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, this is ridiculous. 11 R on the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven on the second one and three on the third one. So that's 21 R. You know, and, and that concludes my briefing. I mean, what else do we want to say? Caterpillar, great American company. Uh and really, that's the justification for just getting out because that is a great American company. So here's uh, here's Cliffs. So we tried the long, that failed, so we took the one-hour loss, took the collapsing dragon uh, uh, stop and reverse. That closed, poor, uh, that closed well. Today, after that opening shenanigans, uh, added the second position and exited here, you know, So there's one unit of risk, one, two, three, four, seven. So seven on the first one, two on the second one. So that's a total of nine. Again, how much more did I want to get? Uh, CVS, this is just continuing that Godzilla collapse. Uh, Four days ago, so Tuesday, we initiated that one. Wednesday, added a second position on the uh, Kata 2, and yesterday just noticed fun. Now, because I didn't put the third one on, I could tolerate some of this. And the market, I didn't get out here because I only had the two positions on, and I was deep in the money. And the market was melting, so I was able to tolerate that heat. And then um, getting out near the low of the day here, and so that's... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six on this one, 
four on that one. That's another 10. Diamonds. With your permission, I'm not even going to count them. It feels too much like hubris. So the this one was a front run of the collapsing dragon. You know, the day was horrible. We got the RLXD. We were playing the front run of that entry here in case the collapsing dragon happened, which it did. And then on today's meltdown, because, again, we only have one only one position on, we can tolerate that kind of heat because the R10 never even got into the dragon. And then when it collapsed further, we could get a second position and lock that in. Uh, and again, flat overnight. Devon Energy. Uh, this is going to sound like a broken record. Collapsing dragon, collapsing dragon, recovery in order to sleep soundly over the weekend. Uh, electronic Arts. This was the SSC that failed for a scratch. Collapsing Dragon, Collapsing Dragon, win. Uh, big down days in sideways markets are, are the easiest days for us when the market is suffering the most. Um, this one was a... Uh, gap down and then collapse, close poorly, and then just took the exit on emerging markets. That's about two. Mexico, oh. scratch on the Cata two. The RLXD entry that closed poorly, gap down, sold off below all of this congestion, second position and covered. That's about seven. I should have totaled these up because this is going to look a little unbelievable. But uh, So the short failed for minus one, the, and then the stop and reverse hit and closed here. Nice. The second position cover, and this is in Brazil. Massive good. Yeah, I just feel like we're showing off now. Uh, Intel. Uh, I was, this was the most surprising thing of the whole day. So yesterday, you know, that big run up and it, it gained like four when everything was melting yesterday. Uh, and then today it just continued and did well. So oddly, the semiconductors really stood out, did not participate in the misery, but we didn't have a position in it because I couldn't understand it. Uh, International Paper, the large industrial company, this was a gap up, sold off RLXD, uh, second position today, covered. And that's about uh, one, two, three, four. That's about four. Uh, IYR, same thing. Marijuana, same thing. Clean energy, same thing. Uh, Rivian. Uh, there was nothing, and this one is really interesting to me because this may just very well be holding at the 30-day low. Uh, it's easy, Dan, because what I do is I reduce the size of the position so that the MMRB uh, is now, I, I'm still only risking X number of dollars, and make your uh, use the range stat as your overnight risk holding and then put the turbo back on. Um, let's see, this is uh, SPY. This is just to show that, um, you know, Dan, I'll say, you know, the MMRB and the dollars at risk per trade, you simply uh, normalize uh, the overnight risk holding with the, uh, with the range stat, and then you adjust your position size accordingly. Uh, what we're doing is we're measuring the gains on the first position. Now, remember, the very first position is is starting off intraday, and it actually has that tight of a stop, and then it just grows in our position. So you're actually capturing those R's. Uh, 
treasuries just notice the uh, as yields go up or yields go down prices go up uh tesla uh the stop and reverse for a micro win today maybe two um and then uh us steel uh two positions for the big win yeah dan just just notice uh, I, what I want you to notice is, like on U.S. Steel, this this risk right here, that's 50 cents. The MMRB is 17 cents. So this is, that size risk is actually three MMRBs. And that's appropriate for the 30-minute chart. If I was on three minutes, that position size would be three times larger. And trade smaller so you get more opportunities. What I want you to notice is that on the worst day in the market, how everything moves smoothly together in the same direction. So it converges. On days when everybody is suffering, these strategies work their best. Uh, it also means on days when it's not melting down and things aren't working as easily, yeah, there's no extra reason to stay in and try to make it work because you know this is, the days like these are going to happen. All right, intraday trading. So this is on a three-minute chart. Here was the uh, the previous day's close. A tiny gap up. It went as high as this and as low as that. And then in the next bar, it broke down below the OR3. So we are short with a standard risk box. Now, this is a case where this is the MMRB. So if I was playing that as a swing trade on 30 minutes, intraday, I could use a whole frog box, and then my initial risk would have looked like that on a swing trade. But what I'm doing is taking a very tight stop, the MMRB on the three minute, and then if this works in my favor, I can grow that into a 30 minute position, keep the same position size on it, and then at night, convert that back to an overnight risk uh, using the range stat, which means you're selling 80% of your position in order to have the widest possible stop. And then the next morning, when it starts moving, you go right back into the three minute and 30 minute battle drill and use the R stat for the overnight risk. So start here, if you're doing an intraday turbo, grow it into a 30 minute chart, use that to manage it during the day, overnight risk measure against that, and then the next day get right back into either a three minute bar if it's gonna be one of your turbo trades, or just go from the R stat back to the 30 minute size risk, which to me is more like a frog box or three times an MMRB. And then just manage the wider stuff. Now what that means is that your three minute position for the same number of, uh, uh, correct, I'm not using the R stat, I'm using the uh, three times MMRB because that's the way, because I'm working on the 30 minute R captures. That's where the advantage is, is that you can swing trade on 30 minute bars without the minute by minute heartbeat risk of the three minute and the very tight risk but you get much earlier signals and easy intraday movements on a frog box, which is about one third of the range stat, you know, cause you're using three out of the 10 range stat boxes here. You're using one out of the 10 here, and then you're using the full range stat for the overnight risk. And that seems like a reasonable way to manage risk in between positions. All right, that's that's advanced hybrid trading right there, fellas. That's a whole workshop by itself, but you get the you get the ideas there. 
And I actually want you to suffer with the problems of trying to figure out how you want to compute the R's. I just showed you about 80 to 100 R from the last two days. So that's a good problem to have. All right. Meanwhile, intraday turbo for uh, – so we had the, uh, the close here, the OR3, the breakdown, the short – the standard risk. And and in the first three bars, your your risk is out. And just capture at the edge, in this case, captured at the edge, uh, captured at the edge of the dragon to lock in this gain against that risk, and that's about Standard reentry, uh, SSC. Uh, because we have a harsh winter, the R10 bottoms out, uh, enters the dragon, leaves the dragon, breaks the PSAR, so it's long, standard risk. My target now is going to be the top of the R10, which is also identical to the PSAR flip. So if it gets above there, this thing could really go. That means that the space between my entry and that level, this is the tactical trade space in here. And all I have to do in the tactical space is get my stop up above my entry so that I can lock in that little wedge of a gain and calm all my nerves. Failed for 0.5. It breaks through the PSAR. So I treat that as what kind of pattern? What kind of pattern would that be? There's a peak of the R10, peak of the R10, Peak of the R10. And then here is the bottom of the R10 here. If I entered in this region, that would be a collapsing dragon. Because I'm entering here, now notice that the notice that the dragon is here. You know, I'm just going to color that in a little bit so you can see him. So that dragon is acting like a noise buffer. And he's rolling over. So uh, because I'm entering after it's crossed the dragon, but before it has broken below that. This area in here is the pocket. And so I entered right here on the southern, as it crosses the southern skin of the dragon. So any entry in there is a pocket entry. I, that feels just like a little pocket before the collapse. It's like a little Lee uh, area of momentary quietude as it's making up its mind if it wants to collapse. So, But it has the protection of the dragon in its favor. It has this little noise buffer, and the fact that it's all rolling over gives me a hint that maybe this thing is down. So I can front run all that bef and get a good fill, and then if this breaks and starts dropping like a rock, I'm not trying to chase the price. 
All I'm doing there is getting my stop in. So this little entry here is the short, it's right in between the belly of the R10 and that southern skin of the dragon. So this is a sweet spot for entry to the downside. And yes, the answer to the quiz, Kata 2, you could call that a supported fall crossing. Uh, everything's failing or supported winter crossing. 1R fail. It did not fail further. So that's the consequence of that earlier, what, when you're trying to front run the collapsing dragon and it doesn't work and it reverses, well, then that hypothesis is disproven. So it just eat the 1R loss like I'm supposed to. Collapsing dragon, cover, Collaps, uh, collapsing dragon, second position, whole market is failing, get paid at the routine place. So when we're, when we're wrong, we're small and take small losses. When we're right, or in other words, when we're aligned, we're large. We got two positions for multiple R's. This one is plus three. That one is plus two. So this is plus five. Uh, this one is plus one. Let's really clean that up. So this one's plus five. That one's plus one. That's minus one. This is minus 0.5. That one's plus two. So five and one and two is eight. That's minus two. That's about a six R day, intraday. On a $400 risk per trade, that's 2,400 bucks. On a $100 risk per trade, that's 600 bucks. Minus your cost of commission, of course. So this one is U.S. Steel. Now, since I can use on U.S. Steel, the, R10, the uh, MMRB, that's a that is a uh, uh, ten twenty. That's a twenty cent risk. If I was using the swing trade, that'd be about a sixty cent risk, so that I could have something more like this as my risk box. So if you're using that, if you use the uh, like the frog box or three MMRBs, you're in that whole trade as one trade because you never. That's that. This is all noise in here. With, if your initial stop was way up in here and you're just trailing it all the way down, that's, that's one position and it's routine. Uh, let's see if we can find that. See if I can pull up U.S. Steel on the thirty-minute here, just to make the point. Uh, so thirty-minute, move all the junk out of the way. So this is where that move starts. Uh, today, here's the close. It opens here, makes that little move, and then spends the rest of the day on the south side of the dragon. So if you had uh, something like a 60 cent risk, risk box, this is about the size of three 
MMRBs. So if you got short when it made a new low of the day at 28.80, for example, then a 60 cent risk box would be at 29.40. And that's here. Oh, guess what that is? That's the PSAR dot. So that would have been your initial risk on the 30 minute trade. There's nothing in any of that price action that makes you get out early. And in fact, when you see this line break, you could get your second position here. And now you could have two positions on the 30 minute and you'd probably get out here at the edge because you don't want to hold a double position for that last hour. And you'll take that all day. Short here, second position here, exit here. On this much risk, you end up getting one, two, three on the first one, one and a half on the second one. Take off a half for whatever slippage and commission. You make 4R in a tidy way on the 30 minute bar with very little anxiety. And the PSAR was your friend all the way down. And then with 4R in hand, you could sell three quarters of your position and hold one reduced position overnight if you wanted to use markets money in case there was a gap down on Monday. I, I made zero of those decisions today. I exited everything in the last half hour today because I don't want to carry any risk over the weekend. Check or hold. All right, let's see where we're at here. All right, let's take a look at the traders today real quick. Uh, Peter's working on, uh, this was from yesterday. Uh, again, these are, that's a reasonable exit, very tight exits. I'd, I'd take this one here instead of letting it come through. That allows you to get long here and scratch. There just wasn't much happening here yesterday. And then today... Uh, it was nothing but cotta twos all the way down, and you get paid huge today. Uh, but he's just work. He's working a lot of symbols. Uh, this is Agnieszka uh, crushing the Aussie dollar or Swiss franc for one R. Uh, another one point one in the pound uh, Kiwi. Uh, the pound yen is uh, one point six. And again, here's your nice uh, collapsing dragon after the opening shenanigans. And then, and then it rolls over. Everything is down, collapsing dragon. And here's her nice exit to bring in 1.9. And that's not even taken this beautiful SSC the day before. I mean, she was. Uh, so this is a chart from uh, Trader X, who was looking at today, the impact today on unrealized losses inside the big four uh, banks that are now at risk, which you can trade with XLF, by the way, as we said yesterday, that's how much is still un net unrealized it's gonna affect their earnings. And then if you wanna understand what that means, here's the article uh, from Zero Hedge. Uh, and that's, this is why uh, there's a lot more, there's going to be a lot of studying in the finance sector. Uh, I don't know how all that analysis is going to shape out or how the gunslingers are going to come in. And that's why I don't want any overnight risk. So I get punked at the opening, but I expect a lot of volatility in XLF, which you can play with the triple leveraged FAS long or FAZ short and just wait for Monday and get all the volatility and none of the over the weekend risk. So uh, zero hedge, mandatory reading. The uh, the oligarchs hate them, but it is essential truth telling in the market, both e on economics and on politics. So here's the this this explains that chart from Trader X uh, that's in the chat room. Uh, Tim uh, working on. Uh, refining his his intraday work 
taken quick losses. I like all that. This one, I think, maybe stuck around a little long and then was slow to get back in. That can be a stop and reverse, and that changes the whole complexion of the day. Um, he's looking to uh, – he's taken our options course to – to better harmonize with his uh, time available. And uh, as a long-term supporter, we're giving him a good deal on that one. That's available to you out there as well. Um, so this is uh, Woj with his standard four. Here's Devin, uh, Tesla, uh, NVIDIA, and US Steel. So he's got a metals and energy a high-tech manufacturer, and a chip company. So that's pretty good. You know, in terms of diversification, he gets four. The aggregate is usually a blend of those four things. And today on his patterns, four uh, R and 14 for the week. Routine trading for him. Um, really nice work. Uh, more on Peter, so he's working in a uh, live demo account, so he gets, like, real fills. Uh, this was slow to get in. This was the OR3 that should have been short with an exit here and then a reverse here, and then cash it here instead of waiting to get long and then eating all of that loss. Uh, this is a reasonable short. Uh white knuckle time, I probably would have gotten out here and then tried to get short again here. That would have probably gotten me long for a scratch or a micro loss. But then he nails this one in second position. Perfect to our battle drill. Perfect. Perfect exit for seven. That's pretty good work. This is the one you got to get right. Um, this is the piece that matters, is being able to get large when you're aligned. Um, let's see, this is uh, Cliff, OR3 should be taken. With the exit here, I'd probably get long like you did, take a half an hour loss. I might have gotten caught in the chop a little bit, but when this breaks, I take that one and scratch. I go long and scratch, and get short. Ah, second position here, third cover. 1.5 is still pretty good work. Uh, let's see, Devon Energy uh, gets chopped initially, uh, and then I think was he was out of the zero state, so he misses the moves. Now, notice how these moves are symmetrical. The move up is the same size as the move down, and now it forms this nice base right here. And when that breaks, now you get your move. And now notice how this move down is the same size as that move down, which was the same size as that move up. So that's the symmetrical move. That's how much power the traders have to move price. Um, this is him in Brazil. Uh, that's pretty good shooting. He might have gotten this one on the OR3 breakout, but that's a good SSC. Uh, yeah, dead money. Uh, I like that short. Uh, and on the, I probably would have exited somewhere in here and just taken my lumps. But then the collapsing dragon gets paid for one R. That's good work. He's getting reps and studying his results. Opening range 30. Breakout. Exit at the edge of the dragon. Short here instead of here. Quick exit, because it's supposed to fail when it doesn't. Don't wait for that to take a full one hour loss, because that's where you should be getting long, and then short, and then long, scratch, short, and exit, and long. So those turning points are uh, should be locked in for action on the next leg. Got to become more relentless on that. The S&P itself, he's practicing some futures. There's your OR3, short, cover, long, scratch, short, minus one, long, paid massively. Uh, we should be short here, second position here, covering here. 
should be short here. Second position here, covering there. There's a kata two if you're still hungry. Uh, let's see. Here's the opening range. We should be short. Cover there. Long here. Stop and reverse there. Scratch. Scratch. Short here. Not here. Although he waits for the collapsing dragon, and that's fine. And I think you could... That's still pretty good. I'd probably go long there and then try to stop and reverse. And then when it breaks the previous Z3 pinch, that's where you can add that second position. Still in all, who wants 12R? Keep firing. Weekend reports. Sideways normal, temporary weakness or, or short-term weakness, I should say. These are the current holdings for blended monthly rebalancing. ETF2 reduced the, because of inc rising global risk, is already down to 40% exposure. Risk Z rolling over, so risk off and worried about the short side. Uh, the RLFF regression line fractal. Uh, this is troublesome right here. And this is getting ready to break through and fail to the downside. That's not good. This is on a RLFF, I think, on a nine-day. If I got that right. Yeah, that's a nine-day. Um, this tentative support at the shelf is is now strongly at risk. And that's why I would not be surprised to see some intervention starting Monday. And that's why I didn't want to hold a lot of um, risk over the weekend and get exposed to that. Now, uh, notice that this little, this failure to fail further, like it didn't fail back to COVID lows. Instead, it, it gave us this little, almost a cot of two and this little run up and is now failing back to here with lower highs. Notice that the RL90 is starting to roll down and coming into convergence with the RL270. And now notice that the MACD has come to the zero, zero line, is getting ready to roll down. That's not good. Uh, the three-day, three nine-day sniper health check this is where it must hold support in order to keep that channel working. If it collapses here, then it's here. And then if that breaks, look out below. Uh, here's the COVID lows. And the nine day, again, as we say, is testing that key support level. This is such a compound critical state that this next week ahead is going to be decisive. And uh, this is not promising right here. This is, yeah, don't know, but man, that downside is a worry. Yikes. That's all you need to know right there. Um, the market 150 is showing this on daily bars and zoomed in a little easier to see. Here's our 150 day look back. This has been generally pretty good so far, but now this break, warning one, the second leg up could only get to here instead of to here, and then rolled over and now broke through this, and today closed to here. Ooh, that puts this in play at 378, and if that breaks, it's all the way back to the 150-day lows and 360 from 420. So from 420 to 360 is minus 60 and 60 over 420 is uh, seven is one seventh. And that's a minus 14% if it gets all the way to here, but it's only halfway right now. So that's about minus seven. And this would be minus seven. That would be the next leg down if it gets to 360. And then this is troublesome. 
at a larger level, that's that's more macro down into the 2024 election. The silly season is coming up. Uh, the daily health check just shows that's the effect of two harsh selling days in a row. So all of the goodness that was built up over seven or eight days is erased in two days. So that's the phenomenon of climbing up the steps and then falling out the window. The market is asymmetric. And we've just seen uh, seen that repeatedly. When the support levels collapse below the RL10 belly, that's where you get collapsing dragon. Look what happens when that support breaks. Crush. When that support breaks, crush. When that support breaks, crush. Collapsing dragon is everything. Uh, blended monthly rebalancing stats. Even the best, Japan. All, the, all of your big winners were down large. Only treasuries. And then in terms of speculatives, oh, the U.S. mid caps had been the strongest, slaughtered this week. Russell Midcaps slaughtered this week. Even real estate, the defensive posture, slaughtered. The last gasp. You buy insurance before you need it. When do you need insurance? Yes. Uh, let's see. Well, there's no joy in Mudville anywhere. Clean energy has been a reliable short. I mean, this is kind of after the fact. This we're, we're already we. If you've been paying attention this week, and when did we have our best week this whole year? When this was happening. In a market that had hit bottoms and was struggling to make, and when it no longer worked, we were able to convert to the short side. We turned that into our best week of this year. And what's suffering the most? So use that as your, as your targets. Just take a quick look at all the finance guys. Uh, American Express and J.P. Morgan. Uh, where's another one here? Goldman got murdered. So that's what you need to know. Uh, Travelers, the, the bank, not quite as bad. And here's the, the anomaly of the semiconductors and Intel. Who would have picked Intel to be the winner? You don't actually have to pick them. You just got to follow them. Big turn in events here in energy, which have, and that's why it's such an ideal swing trading on the 30 minutes, that whole energy complex, because of those kinds of gyrations. When you get that much up and down movement in a month, in a week and a month, there's enough room for us to make a living. And then, so this is the, you know, the top 30 based on blended percentage. And this section here is the bottom 10 based on blended Oof, natural gas, minus 60%. Yikes. So for picking longer-term winners and losers. 
Um, mixed performance in the U.S., Asia generally weak except South Korea. Europe in much better position. Brazil getting slaughtered, but Mexico, look at the difference between Mexico and Brazil. Remarkable. Uh, gold really becoming, you can't put it in Bitcoin. If you're a large, you need, and you need size. Uh, this is mostly the globals plus gold in all the green. And the, the weakness here in metals and mining, that's what we're seeing in the steel companies. Steel companies are white and green. Was great, now just good. Preserve the profits. And we did that this week. Uh, volatility and liquidity measured by average daily dollar volume. And now looking at ATR percentage, the ones in the green are very liquid and volatile. And that gets you to semiconductors, biotech, oil exploration, and then gold miners, and then regional banks. Boy, is that going to get a lot of play. Holy mackerel, is that going to have a lot of play next week? Um, yeah. We'll go right to the daily now. Um, I, I, I didn't buy any of those. I'll be ready for them uh, Monday morning. Cause you could see, you could very easily see, you know, we had two days of selling and it closed poorly. And then over the weekend, lots of negative talk and people panic selling and that gives a morning hook. So there's a really nice possibility of a, Tactical morning hook play. Uh, tactical summary. Tons of suffering across the board on the NDX. Lots of auto framers to choose from. Handful of FDD or uh, five DDs to work on. This is again a trader's market. Plenty of work. Uh, the ETFs. Joining in the pain and suffering, including the globals now, the lone exception being gold, treasuries, uh, reasonable set of auto framers. Uh, the auto framers and squeezes. Today's range was so large, there's none of them are adjust or are, are squeezing. Um, I'll be spending a lot of time on this one uh, in my prep this weekend. S&P 500, Godzilla set up, and here he comes. King of the monsters. Just getting ready. Just warming up. And then inside our tactical symbol set, Biotech and Arc Genomics and Rivian. Lots of goodies there. And uh, the one-day movers, I mean, look at the size of these one-day Z-scores. So ARE and PEAK were two that we traded as Godzilla's, you know, last winter. And they're kind of back in play now. They were financial services companies. Um, so there's Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan. When they're when the big fat banks are on that and Caterpillar, when they're on that list, you know that we are in duress. Uh, and then inside our just our tactical set, 
look how many are now in the, you know, in the double green. And this is what made Rivian stand out for me as the unusual behavior. Extremely not volatile while everything else is running around through the desert with its hair on fire. And no, I, I think the metals have just started to move. And Intel, this is, this is extra volatility to the upside. That's the anomaly. So the anomalies that I see is Rivian, failure to fail further while everything else is melting down, and then Intel actually making gains. Strange, strange worlds we live in. And look at the lack of volatility in Texas Instruments and NVIDIA. So the semiconductors themselves, that's the one that feels like maybe they're bottomed and the uh, all the financial shenanigans are not touching them and there, maybe there's some value play there and maybe they're the leadership. Uh, if we see a, a strong recovery on Monday, don't be surprised if you see semiconductors continuing to lead the way. I would also say the metals because they've really suffered a lot. And that's why I did not want to be short with multiple positions, especially with that much in my basket, if I can say it that way. This one tells you this, the story of today. And this is the position I like to be in, is that we had our positions in, got full benefit from the short side exposure, and when the meltdown happened, we made big bank and then eliminated risk. over the weekend. That's where I want to be. And then I am now free to study things like the anomaly of Intel and the defensive plays of silver, gold, treasuries. If there was ever a bank you were going to bet on, you could do worse than J.P. Morgan versus Goldman, and if you were going to bet on who was better positioned, Goldman or J.P. Morgan, you'd say J.P. Morgan because of this versus that. Resistance to the terror. Great candidates for the short-term trading combine large average range percentages and high levels of frog quality number. There's your top five. There's even Intel and energy are in there. Brazil. Pretty good candidates for reliable trading. Even Goldman's starting to sneak onto the list there. Okay, I see you, Goldman, looking to melt down. That's, that's what all the pain and suffering is about. We are below the long-term average in the zero line. We're approaching minus one Z score on the slope of the RL30, which is the slope of that blue line. Coming to a really important turning point. The last time it was here, it gave a cot of two in recovery. This time, not so much. You could be genuinely worried about this. Notice how important the plus one Z-score and rollover is in terms of knowing when the move is over and being able to shift your orientation on the far side of the hill compared to the upside of the hill. We were able to get our short side on in this move. Uh, just as a reminder, this is uh, this is what the pre-COVID historical volatility looked like, the bands, and then after COVID, what it all looks like. This was actually, I got to move that to the left. This, this was the COVID move. Look how increasingly volatile the swings are. That's why 30-minute swing trade framework is working, because it takes advantage 
of those sh shorter duration but larger amplitude waves. Better able to handle that volatility. Crucial critical state here. Yikes, look out below. The slope of the RL30 just getting is coming out of that yellow zone. The 90 has rolled over and the R and the 10 period is all bad. That's as bad as you can want to see it. Remember the last time that it made a recovery here? We had a good news story in the RL90 that was providing support. But guess what? Those days are over because the RL90 is sloping downward. So it's harder to believe that that's a routine support level here. In fact, what this leads you to believe is this kind of a move that it's going to come back and test this, which is a comeback to at least, it could very easily get back to 360. And that's where when this, this move here occurred from here to here, that's why this move could go from here back to 360 without batting an eye. All right, that's everything we want to, you know, so if that's not enough doom and gloom, tune in for this weekend's <laughs> additional commentary tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to do a second uh, summary of the swing trade. So, the last one I did took a look at the month of, um, you know, January and February, and we had something like 350R in there. And uh, this last week, uh, I'm going to go from March 4th forward in order to cover the new, basically just the swing trading from this week, because I think we want to document how quickly the state of the ocean changed, you know, the weather and the climate or whatever, the sea state, a sailor would call that, and then how the, system, the swing systems responded to that. So I think that deserves its own little commentary and lesson, so I'll do that. So uh, um, true storytelling circle in the morning for the work in progress coaching group. And, uh, oh, uh, Ed, Ed, did you post a chart? I'm sorry. Hang on, Ed. My bad. How did I miss that? Yes, sir. So, Ed, is this, uh, I'm assuming this is inside your, uh, are you doing the option bundle on this one? Yep. Uh, and he's working with uh, my brother as his coach, using the visual wrist box, sees the kata two, gets short, sees the collapsing dragon as um, confirmation of this move, and that is keyed in on this one. This, uh, this if you get out here, this is a reasonable reentry. gets paid 7.5 r sniper trading plus options with your personalized coach uh i do my best to coach my brother is the coach he uses that uh the nursing mentality of um tough love with empathy for maximum healing, uh, I'm telling you, um, I'm trying to persuade him to do more coaching. Um, he's been doing really well with the trading, and so I got to persuade him to coach. So uh, he's got a limited bandwidth on how many more people he can coach. But if you're interested, uh, I would grab it while the iron is hot because uh, you will really benefit from his combination of empathy and um, uh, rigor. That's I, th I attribute that to the nursing mentality. The patient heals themselves. 
and the nurse ensures that that happens with best practices. So, all right, that's everything I got. So tomorrow morning, true storytelling, work in progress, people. Uh, Ed, you're welcome to join us on that one too, by the way. That's by invitation. Um, uh, Saturday evening for the swing trade reviews. Sunday is the creativity. I'm telling you guys, the um, we just got uh, summoned up to the three-star general's office to report on the successful experiment down at the Explosive Ordnance Demolition School. So one of my students took the creativity lessons that I've been doing for us, and I had him create some uh, leadership training exercises for the Explosive Ordnance Demolition School down at Hurlburt Airfield. And by the second session, the individual students who are all bomb squad demolition experts are running the sessions themselves to learn how to do it and internalize the view. And uh, it was astonishing how successful that was. The senior NCOs, now I want to tell you, there is nobody that is more skeptical and grounded in evidence than senior non-commissioned officers, senior sergeants that are in bomb disposal. Those guys do not play around. They are serious people. And their unanimous report back to their brigade commander, a full colonel, was this is amazing stuff. And it's changing the way they are looking at problem solving and performance improvement inside their own demolitions school. These are the guys that are teaching our demolitions experts. So the uh, upon hearing that testimony, uh, the three-star summoned us up to his office to figure out how we can export this across all of Army University, which is 7,000 faculty and 200,000 students every year. And um, this stuff is working, and creativity turns out to be the foundational skill that you need in order to be adaptive in chaotic times. So. Um, uh, we got a deal on the creativity course right now. I'm open to doing more and accommodating your situation, but um, I wouldn't wait. You know, the slots fill up pretty quick, and I can only coach so many people. Good news is I got half a dozen teaching assistants who can lead you successfully through that course because I've been beating them up for 30 weeks. So if you want a reduced rate and do it with a teaching assistant, uh, instead of with me, you, we can arrange for that too. So contact me if you're interested and uh, we'll get it working. I just think it's that important. Take good care, guys, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And Sunday morning, again, the Creativity 202 cohort for session three, and uh, we'll see you then. Take good care.